Hey everyone and welcome to HRO Tech. In this video we're going to be looking at the chapter 2 of um, the IGCSC ICT um, textbook. Okay, and now we're looking at input and output devices. Okay, now, um, now in this chapter we're going to learn the following. We're going to learn about input devices, direct entry, we're going to learn about the output devices, so it's important for you to stick around. It's going to be in a series, and there's a need to just actually break it down so that you can just um, understand it as much as possible. Okay. Now, as the name suggests, right, these are invariably hardware devices. That simply means that they can be sent to the computer, okay, and many of those devices exist. We have the common, in fact, you know them from the get-go. You, you just, when you hear about input devices, you, you have an idea of them, okay? They are, they are not um, they are not a cake, right? They are, they are not abstract. You, you have an idea, okay? From your keyboard um, to your mouse, etc. you have an idea. So stick with me on this, okay? Trust me, it will be second nature. Now let's start with the input devices and then their uses. And in this video, we've talked about what input devices are and what output devices are. So in this video, what we're doing is we're exploring each of those input devices so that whenever you see questions on them, you know what to do. Okay. So let's start with the most obvious. I know I know you're thinking maybe a mouse, but trust me, the first thing that comes to mind is keyboard, right? And it is by far the most common method used for data entry because we use it to send data to the computers. Okay, we have them in our computers, we have them in our tablets, we have them in our mobile phones, and all and uh, many other electronic um, items as well. Okay, now um, the keyboard is connected to the computer, and we have what we call a wireless keyboard, and we have what we call a wired keyboard now the one that is wired is connected to the use of your usb okay so you just probably plug your usb and then you have it as an external and then you can um, key in those details to your computer you can interact with them okay in the case of tablets and um, your mobile phones like you know we've talked about the smartphones and we've talked about the tablets and we've talked about the difference between them so if you don't know the difference between a smartphone and a tablet and a tablet Please check the chapter one of um, this um, video. This is the chapter two of the thousand. Check the chapter one. It's right there on my um, YouTube channel. You can just search for it and you're going to see that to know the difference between them. Trust me, it's very, very interesting. Okay. Now, uh, in the case of the tablets, the mobile device, the smartphones, right? Um, the keyboard is often virtual. Okay, um, yeah, they are virtual, or what we call your touch screen, okay, and which you're going to see later in um, the course of this um, test book, okay. So, when the characters is on the keyboard is key in, it is converted into what we call a digital signal, which the computer can, you know, can interpret, okay. Um, yes, I'm not, I'm not going to dispute that, but it is kind of slow method for keying details okay and especially when you have so much work to do and yes it's, it will be prone to errors because by keying those details you're going to uh, probably key in some wrong things but but apparently keyboard is still the easiest way to that anybody can use to just um enter text um, numbers into the computer right but however the frequent use of it causes what we call the repetitive strain injury okay and you're gonna see that in hmm, chapter 5 the last page in the test book chapter 5 I'm talking about repetitive strain injury okay in the hands and of course in the wrist as well then again the economic keyboard which is right here can help to overcome this problem okay and these have keys arranged differently and they are also designed to give more support right to the wrist and hands what you're doing a lot of typing okay now um, in summary how can a computer recognize a letter press on the keyboard right there's that main brain or the circuit board at the base right inside of the screen okay so when h uh, or or maybe l is pressed the, this completes a circuit as shown okay so this is something like for example now when we press l the cpu in the computer can then determine which key has been pressed 
which is L. Okay, and then the computer refers to the index file to identify which character the key press represent. Okay, so you press later, which letter is this? And it recognizes, oh, okay, it's L, and of course, that is done. So, what can we use the keyboard for? Well, the keyboard is to input data into application softwares, we use it in typing commands, and so on. Advantages they are the fast entry of text into a document, it's a well known method. It's easy for use for most people, and yeah, it's easier to do verification checks, right? As uh, data is what entered. Disadvantages for not disputing this: it can be very slow compared to other data entry um, um, devices, and of course, it can be difficult to use. That's if you have um, this has limited amps uh, or values. Um, it's funny, but it's true. It's advantage, right? And it's the fairly large device that can use up, you know, you know, a valuable deck space. We're talking about the keyboard, not talking about your laptop keyboard, we're talking about the external keyboard, the keyboard you have to get. You know, when you're having a desktop computer, you have a keyboard, that's what we're talking about. Okay? And then under the input, we have numeric key parts. Okay? Now, the numeric key parts are used to enter numbers only. That's what it does. To enter numbers only, you can use them in your ATMs, which is the auto auto automate automatic teller machines. That is where customers can key in and they you know this, you know they can key in their pins to enter the amount of money they want to enter, right? And you can also see it in point of sales, right? In a case where the barcode reader fails to read the barcodes, now the, you you know the number has to be keyed in manually by the operator. Okay, mobile users to allow. Um, to enter the full numbers, right? For mobile phones, they allow for full numbers to be keyed in, right? And of course, for the chip and PIN device, which we we'll also see later in this chapter, um, where we are paying our credit cards, okay? The, the chip and PIN device, so you you slot in your PIN, you slot you slot in your chip rather, and then you type in your PIN, okay? So it could be in the form like this, um, what you have as what we call your EF POS, right? So the moment you slot in, right? You can slot in your, your you slot in your chip right here, which is your card. This is right here, like a chip, right? The chip is right here, okay? The chip, okay? I think I should close it. The chip is right here, right? And you can slot it in, okay? You can actually slot it in, and then you can just type in your pin. Okay, when you're paying for that, okay? Um, fast entry of data into your spreadsheet so let's look at some advantages of it okay um let's look at um it is faster than the standard keyboard because it's easier to enter numbers okay and because they are small devices they are very easy to carry around but however in disadvantages um sometimes the keys are small so it's kind of difficult to impute and then again the order of numbers is not intuitive right uh, people don't really you know, people don't really like it, you know, um, it's not really easy to um, to go about that. Okay, so, um, yeah. Okay, let's, I think we have um, time for one more. Um, let's look at the pointing device. We've looked at the keyboard, and then let's look at the pointing device right here in this video. Now, for the pointing device, okay, we have the mouse, okay, and now, point device is simply what you're using to point, right? So, the mouse is kind of like an example of a pointing device, and not just mouse. But let's explore mouse. Now, if you're wondering how the mouse looks like, this is an example of how the mouse looks like, okay? Now, it's a, like I said, it's an example of a pointing device, and this is where the user is able to just... The user is able to just control um, the position... Um, of a pointer on the screen, right? By moving the mouse around. So by moving the mouse around, you are controlling the position of the pointer um, where it is in the screen. Now, there are usually two buttons. Now, let's look at this, the two buttons right here, okay? And they have different functions. So we have the left button, which is used to select an item. So you click on it to select an item. And uh, also by, you can click, double click on it. So you, um, we have the click to select, and double click um, to actually open that folder or um, application. Then we have the right button, which is used to bring up something like this, right? The drop down menu. Okay. Now, 
Many also have what we call a scroll button, which helps us to speed the process of moving through a document. So it's like a scroll bar, right? To scroll up and down, up and down. Okay. However, we have uh, optical mouse, right? Which is detected by the reflected light rather than what the position of the moving ball. And of course, we have cutless or wireless mouse. Okay. So that simply means we have the wired mouse and we have the wireless mouse. The, the Colors mount works with what we call a USB um, wireless receiver. So you plug the wireless receiver into your laptop, right? And then you are able to use that wireless mouse, okay? And um, the advantage of optical mouse, it, it has no moving parts. And it also does not pick up any dirt, okay? It makes it more robust and improves um, its performances because the other type of mouse can be skinned uh, on certain surfaces reducing the control. Of the point so you could look up optical mouse to see how it looks like and um yep it's, it's going to be awesome okay i think i can show you a picture of it so optical optical uh, mouse so you can see what i'm talking about optical mouse let me give you a picture of it so this is a case study of these are modern optical mouse uh, but this is it okay you can see how the optical mouse um is okay so yep okay um Uses of a mouse. Okay. Uses of the mouse, and we also have it here as well. So, uses of the mouse, almost anything, depending on the software. But it includes your opening, your closing, your minimizing, your grouping, your moving, your deleting, um, you doing for imaging, editing, controlling position, and so on and so forth, right? Advantages of a mouse, right? It is a faster method of choosing an option rather than using a keyboard. So it's very fast to just choose an option. Um, it's very, it's a very quick way to navigate to your application or websites um, as much as possible, right? Does not need a large desk because it's just a small mouse, right? When compared to a keyboard, um, the advantage is that it can be difficult for most people who have restricted hands movement. Um, than using a keyboard for data entry. So people, they have that restricted movement. So if you have probably an issue with your hand that you don't have to move around, you're going to find the mouse very challenging to use. Yes, it leads to damage, right? And the other type of mouse quickly becomes clocked up with that. Okay, it's difficult to use if there's no um, uh, flat surface. So you have to use it on a, on a flat surface, okay? Readily available, okay? Um, the next one is the touch pad. Okay, so the touchpad is just kind of like the mouse, literally, but um, it is used, it's, like I said, it's used as a pointy device and it is installed as a hardware on, um, it's installed as a hardware, as a hardware on your um, keyboard, right? On your laptop, as the case may be. Okay, so like I said, it's still the same thing like your mouse. It is being controlled by the user moving. In this case, you're moving your fingers around the touchpad. You're moving it, and then you're gently tapping it to stimulate the left button. And you can see right here the left button, and uh, which is to select, double click on it to open, and then your right to actually get something like this. So you see that this is right, my right. This is my right, and then this is. Um, right here, you can see I'm not the, the website to type or anything. Okay, so it's the same as the mouse. Okay, now for the advantages, it's the same as the mouse. You're selecting options now, but the difference is that the touchpad is integrated into the laptop, so there's no need of a separate mouse. Okay, which is actually very cool. Okay, and that means you don't have to rely on any um, uh, uh, flat surfaces uh, surfaces to actually use your mouse. But in the case of the Disadvantages, people with limited still is going to find in any form of hand issues that involves movement, find it quite challenging to use. It can be difficult to come to control the pointer when compared to a normal mouse. I love you say it. it's true, right? It's difficult to control it, right? It's not it's not easy for everybody, except you've using it for a very, very long time. It's more difficult to use when setting operations such as drag and drop. It's easier with a mouse, okay? So you have to put that into consideration. And um, do we have time for one more? I think we have time for two more. Yeah, I think we just um, 
we we'll just talk about this and um, I think that would be very helpful for us. So stick with me on this, okay? As much as possible, we're going through it. Okay? The tracker ball. Hmm. Tracker ball. Now, this is what we call the tracker ball right here and even in your car, right? Um, now, they're similar to a mouse except that there's a ball on the right, um, either on the top or the side of the device. And that is where you have like a kind of where you can control your pointer on the screen, okay, by rotating the ball. So you, you, you're not moving the mouse, but you're using that to control the pointer, right, by rotating the ball with your hands. It's easier to use for most people with limited hand use. So if you have an issue with your hand use, fear not, you can get a tracker ball. So instead of moving your mouse, you could use a tracker ball to actually move around, okay? And it's just like the mouse, some tracker ball have two buttons and it's still the same function as your mouse. What are the uses? Okay. Um, can be a good alternative to a mouse for people with conditions such as the RSI. It is used in industrial control room environment where it is faster than the mouse to navigate through process screens and luxurious cars to select functions such as the radio, um, telephone, uh, music, sat nav, that does the satellite navigation and so on. Okay. Advantages, right? Does not need uh, the same fine control as a mouse. So it's just the same, right? It's easier to use than a mouse, right? If the operation has problem with, like I said, the um, rigs of your hand. It's more accurate because you're using the ball to move on. So it's more accurate on the point of the screen than a mouse. And it's more robust, okay? More robust is, in, in terms of it can be able to, to um, um, it is not just portable, but um, it, it can work at, at a more efficient rate, okay? It needs less desk space than the mouse. Remember, if you're just putting it there and you're moving it as much as possible, it's not like you're moving it around which you're gonna have to create enough of desk space, okay? The disadvantage of the owner of a tracker port is it is not supplied right with the computer as standard okay so therefore it's more costly so you have to get it separately okay you need training because it's not a standard equipment so you need training on that okay now remote control now everybody has a remote control right in your house like literally and maybe i'm just going to add this but it is a pointing device so if you did not know that well welcome on board now you do okay that your remote that you use you probably sit in your in 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 your, in your sitting room and you're like crossing your leg and you're selecting the channels now what you do you're pointing right to that um particular one device so it is used for operation for other device using what we call the infrared signal that's what you use okay the button of the keypad i use to select so many options there are so many options on your remote control now what are the users right we have remote control for televisions for satellites and you can use it to alter functions such as sound volume change channels etc etc even on dvds we still have a remote control is it to control what we call a multimedia system and it is using industrial applications to remotely control processes such as stop and of course the start machines okay so let's get advantages quickly it's right here it can be operated from any reasonable distance unlike for example a wired mouse which is restricted by the length okay some industrial processes are hazardous so it is an advantage disadvantage on the other because the advantage really cool because you could be at a distance to control right those um, um those machines or whatever um, but it's advantage is that it is difficult to use if the operator has what we call a limited hand risk or movement, okay? It is easier to block the signal. That is, for example, the walls in the building are probably very, very thick. Let's talk about the gamepad and the joystick and the driving wheels. They are all part of it, okay? They're all part of pointed devices. So, um, in this case, um, we have the joystick have what we call a similar function to a mouse and tracker board. So what you're simply doing is, give me a minute to check this, um, okay.
All right. So what if what you're doing is um you you're gripping the stick right there. You can see right here. You're just gripping the stick, and the point of the screen can be controlled. Use it to control, and they used to make selections. Often they have another button at the top of it, right? Um, that is used for gaming purposes, maybe to fire a weapon or um, yeah, literally joystick are used for gaming. So using gaming for simulations. And advantage is that it is easier than a keyboard to navigate the screen. So it's easier to navigate the screen when you're playing game, right? The control is more realistic for some applications than even a mouse. Yes, it's more difficult to control your screen keyboard with other devices such as a mouse. So that can be um, a disadvantage because it's difficult. Unlike the mouse, it's easier to just maybe exit or do other things as well. Driving wheels, right? It's an example of an input device and it's similar to a joystick in many ways in such a way that it can connect to a computer or a game machine usually to what we call a usb port now this allows you to be able to simulate the turning of a steering wheel okay um we have such as button or pedals which allows you to maybe accelerate and brake sensors are used to actually pick up the left and right movement so that the user get that sensation of steering a car Around the circuit or on the road, so it's actually like an input because you, you, whatever you're doing is sending a signal right there to the engine or whatever to every part. You know your cars, right? And uses of driving wheels, they can be used for a video game, okay, especially car racing, okay. The track head, they also use for simulations, right? Um, yeah, we'll talk about the the the, the st uh, a driving steering car. We see that we can use it, right? And not just like an actual car, but more or less um, those simulation games that you have a driving wheel. And as you're driving, like you see yourself driving the game as well as possible. Um, advantage of a driving wheel is easier than a keyboard or joystick. Okay. Especially when we're talking about control steering movement. The driving experience is nearer to an actually steering wheel. Other controls operate in real life. Hmm. Disadvantage is that it is expensive. Uh, movement on the steering can be too sensitive, giving that unrealistic feel. And of course, unless there is an expensive simulator, feedback to the driving wheel is in non existent. And then let's talk about um, the touch screen. And the touch screen is an input device. It is, yeah, because a user can choose an option by simply like what I'm doing right here. Okay. Uh, probably I want to select something. I have click this. You can see this is a touch screen. I'm using my hands to select this. I'm using my hands to select this. So it's an input device. By simply touching a button or icon on the screen, the user is automatically made that need of any form of pointing device. So use of touch screen could be self-service deals. For example, petrol stations where you just touch the screen to select a full gauge. Um, automatic teller machines, point of sales. Uh, your mobile phones, computer-based training, there's so many of them. Now, let's look at the advantage. Advantage is that there's a faster entry of options than using keyboard or mouse. Take note of the advantage advantage because most of the time they ask you what's the advantage of using this over this, the disadvantages and disadvantages of using this over this. Take note of it, okay? It is a um, very easy method for choosing options. It is a user-friendly method, no training necessary because like usually selecting this, right? You don't need any training to do this. Nothing, right? No training for do that, right? Um, it's a user-friendly method, like I said. Uh, it's option to expand the size of the display if necessary. Limited number of options is available using the screen, the touch screen, right? And can lead to a problem of operator has to use um, system frequency, especially if you have your RSI, it's still coming to play. Um, the screen can get very dirty with consistent touching. Uh, you will have to put that in. It's, an, it's a disadvantage. Okay. Scanners. Basically, what scanner does is to um, get a hard copy of that information and send it into a computer to get a soft copy of it. That is what the scanner does. Okay. So the app, the the, the hard copy is scanned by what we call a light source, and it produces that computer readable image okay now images of text can also be used in what we call the optical character recognition which we're going to see 
why uh, later also in this chapter that is software to produce what we call editable text okay editable text use of the scanners you can scan documents convert them to a format for use in various software package you can scan in old documents okay okay you put it in your originals as well as producing records in case the paper copies are lost you can scan photographs you scan in barcodes and the POS term terminals as well uh, advantages image can be stored for editing later use it uh, when used with the OCL okay it's easier to get in your typing documents again um, it's probably to recover damaged documents and photograph by scanning them disadvantages could be qualities can be limited okay depending on how good a resolution um, a resolution or how capable that scanner is okay so it can be limited depending on how good right uh, they are fairly slow at scanning scanning is a very slow method and you have to bring that really into this um for digital cameras and um i'm going to talk about i'm going to talk about i'm going to skip the sensor and then talk about um just a summary of these two camera we'll talk about these two camera right here what we're talking about is the fact that um these two cameras have largely replaced traditional film based cameras so it's directly within the memory card right connecting that camera to the computer using usb port and then you could also use wireless data transfer as well so you're just capturing images okay and um you're taking photographs it's used for data capture devices um advantages could be easier to produce better quality photographs easier to upload photographs no need to develop films and print out photographs anymore no need for that okay memory cards can store many thousands of photographs it has advantage right um there is a need to know how to use a camera so yeah need to be digital literate to use the camera properly um of course images often need to be compressed to reduce the amount of memory use for microphone right they are that beauty where you're able to it converts your sound okay um into what we call electrical current that's what it does so the current produced is converted into what we call a digital format so that computer can process it or store it okay as much as possible so when sound is created it causes the air to vibrate okay there's a lot of um steps on how the microphone works okay um the diaphragm in the microphone picks up the air vibration it begins to vibrate the copper oil it fast forwards and back forward motions the core signal is either amplified or sent to a recording device use of microphone to impute speech to impute voice um recognition software it can be used as a sensor to pick up sound okay it can be used in video conferencing or voice over internet protocol um that's the use advantages is that it's faster to read in text than typing it with um, a, uh, a keyboard right you could you could speak to your computer and um if you have to type in it's possible to manipulate sound in real time and of course if used in a voice artificial software it has the advantage of improving safety then we have microphones okay and it means that sounds can use up a lot of computer memory okay and of course the voice recognition software is not accurate as typing in manually okay light pen on the other hand is like a pen just like a pen right here and they are used with computers as input device for drawing okay selecting objects as much as possible so let's get advantage greater accuracy than the touch screen and of course um, it is small and it's easy to use technology um, disadvantages could be problems with lag when drawing on screen it might not draw properly okay it only works with um not just no this is not a disadvantage so don't add this guys okay because um back then it was working with crt but now it's working with everything so don't add this it's not a disadvantage okay and not um not 
not that accurate when drawing okay not that accurate when drawing is true because it's not like a real thing but although improvements are being made okay so we can see that there's problem with the lag when drawing especially um if the pen is malfunctioning okay so thank you very much i'm going to create a special video for sensors because it's a question that comes in day day out okay thank you very much and please do want to subscribe right here to this channel see you next time bye bye